Excels! Thank God it's Friday, right? How cool was that last night watching pro football again? Is it me? But is that a different Aaron Rodgers? Did I see Aaron Rodgers helping Zach Wilson last night? Holy cow. A completely different Aaron Rodgers. Hey, maybe it was Green Bay. You know what? Sometimes a player can really find, like, the fountain of middle age, so to speak, at a new place. And here, let's do this. You know, it's not so much that he didn't have great success in Green Bay, but he's a different guy. And we see that all the time with players that go to different places and different zip codes. Ryan Tannehill was not very good with the Dolphins. Goes to Tennessee. He's kind of rejuvenated his career. We saw Rich Gannon years ago. He was a journeyman guy. He goes to the Raiders and puts in an MVP season. We see guys go to places. And we see guys go places and have success, and they could turn their careers back around again. Pretty amazing. Really, pretty amazing when, when, when you see some of these guys. And I say this to you. I thought, I thought Zach Wilson looked pretty decent last night. Could there be a team at the trading deadline that becomes a panic team? That they need a quarterback to maybe get them across the line and maybe they want to go with him? Would you give up some draft choice? And would you give up some draft equity for him? I don't know. I thought he looked good last night. How's the, how about this? That 57-yard touchdown that he threw, my opinion, that was probably the best throw I've seen him throw since he's been a pro. I mean, really? How about doing this? Would you? Would you? Would you send... Zach Wilson to the 49ers for Trey Lance and just exchange guys and see if new zip codes work out. And then what you can do is you can kind of like say, well, I traded him for a first rounder and you don't lose face in the deal. Would you do that? I mean, you have a backup guy in Trey Lance behind Aaron Rodgers. You put him there, you put him in a new environment. You try to save yourself some face. I don't know. I mean, would you do something like that? Because if you put Zach Wilson or Trey Lance on the open market, we're talking fifth and sixth rounders. You're not going to be talking about first round equity. So maybe if you just send them to the Niners and the Niners send back Trey Lance and they get Zach Wilson, I don't know. What you're trying to do is kind of, trying to stop some of the dead weight that you're going to get back. Like, look at Jalen Rager. When the Eagles cut him and the Eagles or the Eagles traded him to Minnesota, what would what, they get for him? A seventh rounder? Not even remotely what you wanted to see. Not even remotely what you wanted to have. Okay? So, end of the day. I don't know. I thought he looked pretty good. I thought he looked pretty good last night in the Hall of Fame game. So, Man, we're going to go through some some interesting things today. We're going to talk about the top defenses. I got 10 of the best defenses in the National Football League. And now I'm going to start it here. You know what's funny? When you listen to the Philadelphia media, and what they don't like to do is they don't like to address the obvious sometimes. The Kobe Dean got hurt in practice. I heard limited coverage of it. They held him out of practice. You think holding someone out of practice who needs all the reps they can get is something that they wanted to do? That guy needs to get as many reps as possible. My opinion, this is already the beginning of what I said. He won't last the year. He's not big enough, and he's being put in an unwinnable position. Again, I, you know, when, when and, and I heard Ray on with... With the guys at Sports Take, what does having leadership at Georgia have anything to do with the NFL? Nothing. What he did at Georgia means nothing. This is a whole different ball game. It kind of tells you who the player is as a human, but that has no bearing on anything in your NFL career. Nobody cares what you did in college. 
Absolutely nobody cares. Okay? He was on a really good Georgia team. So? What's that got to do with you being able to put 160 tackles up? You think that that's an easier transition coming from Georgia to the NFC East? Because you played in the SEC East? Man, that has, they have nothing to do with one another. I played with some of the greatest players on the planet. I've seen some of the greatest players in the history of college football. They were all on great programs. They get to the NFL, they stunk. It doesn't matter. Okay? I mean, so what? He was good at Georgia. That guy is not going to make a season. He's not big enough. He can't even get through the first week of practice. And again, this has nothing to do with the character of the kid. I personally, right now, I don't give a shit about the character of the kid. I want to know if he can play. I want to know if he's going to be able to be durable enough. Those are my major concerns, not if he's a good guy or a leader. I don't care about that. Can you play? Can you cover 130 to 160 tackles? There's not a chance in hell I think he can. But again, that's an opinion. Okay? You keep hanging your hat on that Georgia bullshit. This is the NFC East. Welcome to the big time. This is not playing Ole Miss. Nobody cares. Are you durable enough? By the way, when you're in college and you've got superior talent in front of you and you're never hit, probably a reason why he played. When you're in the NFL and you don't have great players in front of you and you've got Landon Dickerson or Jordan Malata bearing down on you? Let me ask you something. Let's just do this as common sense conversation here. If Nicobe Dean had to play against Jordan Malata 17 weeks in a row in a 34 look, do you think he lasts a year? Do you think if he had to line up against Zach Martin 17 weeks, he can last a year. How do you think he will do against those guys? <laughs> I don't know what you guys are thinking or smoking. No way, baby. No way. Not happening. Mike, it goes, Sills is right. We have cause for concern at linebacker position. But can we please talk about other aspects of the team? We're going to do that. Micah, that was the story coming out of camp yesterday. Dean got hurt. What, you don't want to address it? I know why you don't want to address it. It's an ankle injury. Oh, well, the shoulder will be next. This guy's not big enough. To, hey. He's not big enough to play the position. He's not big enough. He's not physical enough. TJ Edwards accounted for over a thousand snaps, which was 94% of the defensive snaps. Just from a physical standpoint alone, that will be tough to replace. That kid ain't playing 94 snap, 94% of the snaps. Doesn't that tell you, too, something about the tragic mistake that Howie made? How about that little stat right there that's kind of been under the radar? So you got a guy. W would it be fair to say that T.J. Edwards played more snaps than any guy on that defense last year, and you let him go? Which means to me he was the most important person on that defense. We were acting like Howie won't get a linebacker. Oh, okay. Like who? He ain't going to pay for it. 
Mike, it goes, Sills just wishes injuries. <laughs> Where am I wishing this? That's awful news for the Eagles. That's awful news for Nicobe. Who's wishing any of that? That's my observations. My observations have been wrong, but hey, they ain't wrong here. Because just by a knowledge and a physical standpoint, he won't hold up. Like I said, I thought that what they should have did was kind of brought him in on the Sam Backer side, let him play a little will, and then slowly moving into the middle. The best case scenario would have been if they would have kept Edwards and then put Nicobe on the other side so he can watch how the position's played. This will be the biggest reason the Eagles lose games this year is because you'll, you're going to lose games this year that you shouldn't because your defense is not good enough. Your defense is not good enough. And I'm going to point this out to you when I named you the top defenses. Let me ask you something here. You guys think you have the same defense that the San Francisco 49ers have? Do you? Defensive snap count leaders. Epps, 99%. Bradbury, 97. Edwards, 94. Slay, 90. Oh, and Kaiser White, fifth at 76%. (laughs) So you took two dudes in your top five on snap counts off your roster. Interesting. Interesting. And a brand new coordinator. 11 goes, we're probably better. Our defensive line's better. This is the absolute point where I say this to you guys. You're delusional. So you think you're better and more experienced than Hardgrave, Armstead, Fred Warner, and Hufanga. All those players were all pro. The heart of their defense is littered with all pros and pro bowlers. Who in the middle of your football team on defense is a pro bowler? Who? Hafanga's the all-pro safety. Warner's the all-pro middle linebacker. And they have an edge rusher who's the defensive player of the year. You truly believe Brandon Graham, don't bring Brandon Graham's name up when you're talking comparisons to Joey Boza. There's no comparison. What a bunch of absolute... Fletcher Cox is a really good ball player. He's on the pace probably with Armstead now. And it's only because he's older. Sometimes I think this live chat should be drug tested. That's Tone even looking at you. You're out of your minds. You're out of your minds. If you think you're as good as San Francisco's defense, you're not. Holy cow. Big Pickin looks at the middle of his defense and thinks they're good because you drafted a Georgia guy. Okay. We're going to move off that topic because, again, you can't debate idiots. So what I've done, every single question mark that I have for your Eagles in 2023 are right here. And by the way, I'm not asking you what yours is because I, I, I don't care. What I'm doing is I'm going to give you the players and I'm going to ask the question what I think could be a question for your starting 22 and some of your backup guys. 
Okay. Um, let's see here. Who cares? We can outscore anybody. You're going to have to, Peter. You're going to have to. Okay? You're going to have to. Here we go. I'm going to start with your one-year wonder. The hero of the one year, Jalen Hurts. Can he do it again? Will be the question. Same with Geno Smith in Seattle. Can he do it again? Do I think he can? Yeah. Do I think he's showing all the great signs? By the way, that interception he threw today in practice, who cares? Seriously, I wonder what Allen Iverson would say to that. Practice? He threw a pick in practice. How do you know what he's working on? He might be working on a new route with somebody. Seals, you are pulling facts that the Eagles still made the Super Bowl. You didn't make the Super Bowl. You're a lesser team. You're a lesser defense. You're a lesser defense this year than you are last year. Okay? Um, Practice. The interception in practice, I could care less. All kidding aside, I don't give a shit about Jalen Hurts. I care about him working on his footwork, working on new things, screen game, all of that. And he is. I want to see Jalen do it again. That's my question for him. In 2000, get this, think about that for a minute. I don't want to see more accuracy. I don't want to see um, less running. I don't want to see any of that. I, I, I want to see if he can do what he did and duplicate what he did last year. If he can, man. Then we're starting to talk about consistently playing great. And that's the truth. If he does that again, because quite frankly, his three years have had different results. He's not done one thing consistently yet. First year, spotty, people didn't think anything. Second year, he wasn't that good. Third year, he was great. What does he do in 2023? Okay. Joseph goes, TJ Edwards couldn't cover. Nicobe Dean can't stay healthy. At least he could play. <laughs> okay? At least he could play. Marcus Mariota, here's my question for him. If you have a disaster and your quarterback misses time like he has the last two years, is that your answer? Um, me right now? I don't believe it is, but we'll see when he gets into these exhibition games. Okay, we'll see. Running back. Swift. How good can he be? That's my question for him. How good can this guy actually be? Can he be a version of Christian McCaffrey? Or the guy Stevenson in New England? Can he be somebody like that? Thousand yard rusher? Hey, get this. How many people believe that DeAndre Swift is better than the kid Stevenson in New England? You think he's better? In one year, that kid has done more in one year than what DeAndre Swift has done his entire career. You think he's better though, right? Talk about being drug tested. You think Swift's better than Stevenson? <gasps> Why is it a silly comp? He had 1,000 yards and 450 yards catching the ball, and he had 60 catches. Why is that a dumb comp? Don't you want that on your team? I thought that's what we were going for with Swift. 50, 60 catches, 500 yards receiving, 800 yards rushing. Isn't that what you're looking for? That kid does it. That kid does it in New England. Swift hasn't done it. Don't you want to be that? I thought you did. 
Or, oh, I see, you think you're better now than that, which you're not. Interesting. Again, another drug test needed. Yeah, look at this. I don't want the Patriots record last year. Yeah, of course, because that's the AFC. That's the man's division. That's the varsity league. I understand that, but 49ers have no quarterback. I'm not talking about, I asked you about your defense. Don't change the goalpost here, okay? Quanco Stevenson will be out of the league in a couple of years, and he had 1,000 yards rushing and 500 yards receiving and 60 catches. Oh, I see. It's actually a perfect comp. If the Eagles and Patriots swapped the running back, Eagle fans would be propping up Stevenson and shitting on Swift if they asked him the same question. Of course. They think because their guy wears Kelly Green, he's better. He's not. He can, I, can he, though? I think he can. I think he can. Penny, will this guy ever be healthy? Will he ever be healthy to live up to his fabulous talent? Yeah, you heard me right. I covered the guy for three years. I actually like Rashad Penny. He's a really good guy. Great to talk to, great to be around. You know, Rocky Long, one of his favorite players at San Diego State. I covered the guy. I was on the station that was the flagship station of San Diego State. I made everybody a promise, and I said, the Eagles drafted Danell Pumphrey. That guy's a bum. That turned out to be a bum, but you guys probably loved him too. Had 6,000 rushing yards in college. You probably thought he was going to be the next Dave Megan or something. I was like, that guy won't be in the league. Penny's a big dude. And I'm glad to see him getting punt returns and kick returns because he, he's electric in that. Okay. Wide receiver, A.J. Brown, can he do it again? Comes off a career year. Quite frankly, the years prior to that, again, Ryan Tannehill, you know, he's in a better system now. He's in a system that fits his skill set more. They, they use him better now. Let me ask you this. <laughs> hey, <laughs> this is a stupid question because I know the answer already. You think he has a better year than he did a year ago? You think he has a better year than he did a year ago? Bruce. I don't think he does, but I think he could have more impact. Because a healthier Goddard, and more opportunities for others. You know, you can be more impactful without numbers. Seals, we don't know for sure yet. Like you said, we are in the world of unknowns. In the world of unknowns on August 4th, really? That goes for every team. So what's the argument until we see the results? There's no argument here. I'm giving you facts on who you are right now. Okay. No, I'll tell you this. There's, there's a ton of uncertainties on your defense. There's none on your offense. Some, a few, but ones you can live with. I've never said anything other than that. Have you ever heard me say that I don't, I called your offense the best in the NFC? Where are you coming from? Oh, again, selective listening. I forget. And drug tested needed. Let me ask you this question here. Will Devontae Smith pass A.J. Brown by the end of the year as the number one receiver in Philadelphia? Yes or no? At the end of 2023, 
Will Devontae Smith have established himself as the best wide receiver on the Eagles, passing AJ? Yes or no? Scott asked a great question. Can the Eagle offense help the defense by making them? Scott, you know how they'll help the defense? 14 play drives, running the ball. That means more running from Jalen early. I would say this to you. Yes, I agree. I think Devontae Smith, by the end of the 2023 season, would have passed A.J. AJ Brown as the best wide out on the Eagles. Yes, he will. Yes. And would have put away my concerns about his physicality and his durability. Okay? If he stays healthy, he'll pass him. And that's a good thing. Because that means you actually finally hit on a wide out. Absolutely. And by the way, no shade on AJ. Love the guy. Think he's a fabulous football player. It's no shade. Quez, how long do you think the Philadelphia Eagles and management and coaches will stick with him if this thing gets out to a bumpy start once again for him? How long do you think they stay with him before they do something either in free agency or in a trade to get, again, get this, to get a number three, you don't have to go out and sign an A-plus wide out. You, could, you just need a guy in there to be reliable. He's not reliable. Now, they're giving him every opportunity for that to happen. How long do you think that they give him before they go like this? Because personally to me, they're not going to go through the season with that guy being a marshmallow. They're not. That 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 third hole has to produce something for you. Deep threat has to take some of the pressure off the top too because something that I don't think you guys really take into consideration last year, would, would this be a fair stat if I said this tone? Would we not agree 85% of the passes and targets went to A.J. and Devontae Smith and the rest of them were spread out and they weren't really a lot? You look at the top two wideouts last year, look at the targets they had. And then you look at the next guys after, they were barely targeted. You have no depth at wideout. You have no depth. The kid from Atlanta, maybe. Not bad. I don't know. Maybe you slide him in there. Okay. Kus hey, five, five, seven, three, four to six weeks. That's about as long as I'm gonna go too. Okay. That's about as long as I'll go. Four to six weeks to see if this kid can do something. 61% of Jalen Hurts' total targets went to Brown and Smith. That's a little lower than I thought. And remember, how many times did he throw the ball? What was it, 450 times? Jalen, do the ball 450. Okay, do the ball 450. So, you know. Yeah, about yeah, I'm looking I'm looking at it now. Okay. Let's go to the tight end. Let's go to the tight end. Let's see what my friend here says. 145 targets for Brown, 136 for Smith, 460 attempts. And I think Jalen had 325 completions a year ago my right tone somewhere in there 325 off of that it sounds about 66 percent 325 ish 306 completions 
round in there, okay? Okay? By the way, you look at... And you know what? And kind of like I threw a couple left jabs at you with the limited amount of passing attempts that he did last year compared to the other big guns in the NFL. It's not what he does. Don't lose sleep over it. Dallas Goddard. Dude, here's two things with Dallas Goddard that I want to see. Can he stay healthy? And please, have better hands. This guy drops one of every three passes thrown to him. He does not have the hands that Zach Ertz had. I think he's a better player, though. He's one of my favorite Eagles. Okay? But you can't have everything. And now here, I'll make this, I'll make this point to you about Travis Kelsey here. Goddard, 55 receptions on 69 targets, 702. It, that's so good. Okay, Goddard in 2022 had a 79 catch rate. Here, here, here's, here's something again. Can Travis Kelsey block? No. Is he physical? No. Is Goddard? Yes. In an offense like, hey, how about this? How many people think that Travis Kelsey would be a superstar in the Eagle offense? knowing full well that the Eagle offense is based off of run first. And the Kansas City offense is not based off of run first. That means he'd have to block. That means he's going to get hurt. That means he's not as physical. That means he plays lesser games, lesser stats. That guy's a blown-up version in Kansas City of Jay Novacek. And guys like Jason Witten. That's who he is. The problem with Goddard is timely drops. The gut-wrenching drops he has. He has to be more. That's right. Be be more clutch. He's not that great in clutch moments. Two-minute drives? I don't think he is. How many times do we see him drop passes last year? Okay. Okay. Bodybuilder goes, Kelsey would be a star in most places, not in places like Philly where you run the ball. Well, you think Jason Kelsey's going to be a star in Tennessee? Blocking for Travis, uh, for um, for Henry? Really? You think he's going to be a star in that offense when A.J. Brown couldn't be? Oh, I see. Again, people don't look at how the, how the cake is cooked. <laughs> You got a guy like Pacheco off the seventh round in that, in that thing because the quarterback spreads the ball out. It's a spread off, it's a spread West Coast offense. It's not an RPO offense. It that offense in Kansas City can't be any more different than the moon and the sun. But hey, I like Dallas Goddard. I do. I think he's going to be a superstar. According to Fox Sports, Goddard had five drops in 21 and one drop in 2022. Really? That's how we saw that? I don't know. I, that's not how I saw that. Left tackle. Jordan Mulata. How good can this dude be? He is the best athlete on your football team. Jordan Mulata is the best athlete on your team. And that includes Reddick. Okay? This guy was playing water polo or rugby. Never played pro football. And now he's one of the highest paid left tackles in the game. At 6'8". Five billion pounds. This guy's like Shaquille O'Neal over there. I mean, unbelievable, unbelievable athleticism that guy has. His athleticism is off the charts. I believe, like Richard does, I think that guy could be the best left tackle in pro football by the end of the year. That includes Trent Williams. And I want him to play to that ability. 
I can't believe how far he's come. It's a privilege to watch him play. I can't believe what an athlete he is. Man, this guy didn't even know how to strap a chin strap on four years ago. And now he's considered one of the best left tackles in the game. Jesus criminy, man. Dude, you turn on some of them rugby games that he played in and you see him moving around and you see the athleticism that he had. Are you trying to tell me, man, this guy just said, hey, I feel like playing football one day and now he's making $17 million a year. That's out of this world. I've never, I mean, Antonio Gates and guys like Jimmy Graham and them dudes, okay, I get it. Holy cow, tremendous. How good can that guy be? Okay, how good can he be? Landon Dickerson. So my question on all these guys. Stay healthy, kid. You stay healthy, I think you could be the best left guard in the NFL. And I think the Eagles are preparing to pay you that way next year. I think this guy here has every opportunity, and for him being a second-round draft choice, it covers the Andre Dillard failure, to so to speak, because he was a first-rounder. Landon Dickerson, man, wow. He was projected to be a center, and he's looking like he could be one of the top three left guards in the National Football League. I see nothing but great things. Just stay healthy this year, kid. Just stay healthy. No devastating knee injury or any of that. This guy's got everything ahead of him. And I want to see that. Kelsey. Here's my question on, on Jason Kelsey. 2022, Landon Dickerson started and played in all 17 games. He has these moments where he comes off the field or so for a drive. Yeah, and that's what I mean. Nicked up injuries. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about miss. He doesn't miss time. He's a tough dude. He's got all of that. Okay? All of that. And he gets nicked up a lot in there. But then again, you get nicked up inside more because there's more traffic. Jason Kelsey. Do we see signs of old age this year at 36? Have I seen it? Nope. Last year watching him play, amazing. Amazing. But when you are 36, like Tom Brady a year ago, sometimes it hits you, and it hits you quick. You get old quick, and you look old quick. couple injuries here, there. Does that make him a step slower? And, and by the way, did I see it last year? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But my only question with Kelsey will be, does father time catch up? Okay. Right guard. Fun fact, Kelsey hasn't missed a game since 2014. But father time hits you, and it hits you hard at random moments. Hits you like a lightning bolt. All of a sudden, you see a guy have a great year. He hits 36. You're like, wow, did he look old. Holy cow. Boom. Right guard. Jurgenstein. Can they do the job? I don't personally give a shit who wins the job. Can they do the job? Are those two guys going to be able to cover for the loss of Isaac Sayamalo? Are you going to be able to replace Isaac Sayamala with those two dudes? It's a question. And again, everything's trending to yes because who the coach is, who these guys are playing in between. Sure, all of that. I complete. How about this? If they fail, it's a colossal fail because there's no reason to fail. Not a chance. But there's a reason Isaac Sayamalo signed one of the richest offseason deals with the Steelers. 
because he was ranked one of the top guards last year. Right tackle, Lane Johnson, nothing. Nothing. There's nothing I want to see from him. <laughs> you just keep being Lane Johnson. <laughs> you just keep being Lane Johnson. I'm good with just being Lane. I have no question marks on him. I, of all the players on your football team, I don't really want to see anything from him. <laughs> I, I I really don't. I just go ahead. Just be lame. He, he there, there's nothing to pass probe. No run blocking. No health. Okay. Yeah. Mental health. Hey, maybe, you know, hopefully he stays in a good mental place. Maybe that's the biggest concern, you know, for him, for me. Watching him play, it's a privilege. He's a tremendous ball player. Okay? Tremendous ball player. Maybe more mental, mental internal issues for him. Okay? The amazing thing about the Eagles offensive line situation is if you fail in Philly, you just don't belong in the NFL. Stoutland always gets the most out of you. And there's not a spot... You'll find a job elsewhere because he's prepared you. Absolutely. Like I said, there's a reason Andre Dillard got a nice deal in Tennessee. He didn't start in Philly. Okay. Well, it's not, it's not the worst thing in the planet, not starting in Philly. Look at who's playing there. You had pro bowlers at every position last year or pro bowl talent at every position a year ago. Yeah. Those are my question marks on the offense. Now the defense. And look what we got here. The offense. Here's the defense. Hmm. There's your offense. Questions I like to see. And here's your defense. You might want to sit down. Brandy Graham. Can he duplicate a career year at 35? Can he do it again? He's been a good player. Okay. Can he do it again? We'll see. I want to see him do it again. How many, um, Tone, how many double-digit sack seasons has Brandon Graham had in his career? Just for, just, just, just for my knowledge. How many, how many double-digit sack seasons and how many years has he done it in? I'd like to know that number. Um, because if he's, he's done it one time, in how many years? So you think Brandon Graham is going to duplicate what he did a year ago in a career year for the first time in his career, he's going to do it again. In his first season, okay, he had double digits. That's kind of a guy you hope. And you're pulling for that he doubles what he did a year ago. Jalen Carter. Um, I want to. I want to see him play a lot early. I want him to start. I want to get him in the game as possible, as soon as possible, because I want to see what he is. I don't want to put this Ferrari in the garage, and I don't want to have it brought out on special occasions. I want this thing out there now, and I want to run this thing as much as I can. It's like telling me you're going to put secretary in the barn and I'll, and I'll bring her out on special occasions or I'll bring them out on special occasions. you got secretariat. You run them in the races. You don't rest them. 
Let me see what he is. Let's get this guy going, man. Let's get this pony moving here. I want to see what he's about. Test him. Put him in shitty situations. See if he can fight his way out of it. See if he's the guy that you think he is and that we all think he is. And I think he is. I want him to play. I don't give a shit if he's a rookie. Here, See, a guy goes like this. He's a rookie. You've got to replace 60 tackles, 16 hits on quarterbacks, tackles for losses, and 11 sacks. Don't tell me then that you're a better defense than you were a year ago when you guys can't replace Javon Hardgrave, TJ Edwards, Kaiser White, and Epps and try to convince yourselves you have a better defense. How dumb are you? Fletcher Cox. Can he still be a force? I'll tell you what. You know what Tone convinced me of? Convinced me after you really look at the year that Fletcher had a year ago. Fletcher's well-deserving of that $10 million. Still took a pay cut, but he's worthy of that. Look at this guy, too. He goes, Eb sucks. You think you got a guy in your football team right now, too, that's going to get you 91 tackles in a safety position? Do you? Do you think you have a safety right now that you're going to get 91 tackles out of? <laughs> Epps may have sucked in your eyes. Your entire safety room sucks. Milton Williams. Can he be... Can he be productive? How productive is Milton Williams going to be this year? How productive will he be? I mean, how much can you count on him to be in a rotation there with these guys? That's the question I have for him. Okay? Oh, Kelly Green. Going to have prospect night in the Eagles secondary. Congratulations to you. Good luck. So you got prospect night. Right, Callie Green versus Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill. You got prospect night versus those dudes. Okay. Prospect night, the link. Jordan Davis. Will he ever be a dominant player? Seals, you are right. Offense needs to bail. They, hey, Ace, and they're going to. But Ace, remember I said this, you're going to lose games this year that you shouldn't. Because of something that happens on the defensive side, bad play, big big play given up, okay? And you're, you're going to go like this, shit. And watch this, beating the Bills would not shock me. If you beat the Bills. But if you lost to the Giants, that wouldn't shock me either. Okay? That wouldn't shock me either. If you could lose to the Washington Commanders last year at full strength, you can lose to anybody and your team was better a year ago. Will Jordan Davis ever be a dominant player? That's my question. For 2023 for him. Josh Sweat. Continue to get better. You're the best defensive lineman that they have right now on August 4th. With the most experience. And you have gotten better. Tell you what, man. Like I said. He, he's, he's a he's a 2.0 version of that Brian Burns guy. I think, he's, I, I think he is the sleeper in this whole defense. He's a good football player, man. I did not believe he was a three-down guy. I think he is a three-down football guy, man. Okay? 
And I think he's your most complete defensive football player in the line. He's a good player, man. Very high on him. Derek Barnett, does he have a role on this team? What's what's the role for him? I'm, I'm going to be interested to see what role he's being and what role he gets put in. What role does he get put in? <laughs> Big picking goes who? <laughs> yeah, who? Sounds like I'm an owl shitting through my feathers. Who? <laughs> right? Who? Joey goes water boy. Let's see what role he has. Will linebacker. Nicholas Morrow. Will he make the team? He couldn't get through one week of practice without all of a sudden the coaches rotating his reps in a position that you have to find a guy to replace 117 tackles with Kaiser White. You got two guys splitting reps. One guy's not very experienced at all, and the other guy was fired in Chicago on the worst defense in the league. That's not promising. Does that guy make the club? Nicobe Dean. Is he good enough and physical enough to play the position? Those are my questions. So far after week one? Too soon? But it's not trending well. Sitting out of practices, full gear practices, which are already limited. So let me get this right. They have very limited full gear practices. And they held them out. Did he have a concussion? Hurt his ankle. Oh, okay. Again, one week. Is he physical enough? And is he good enough? We'll find out. Christian Ellis. What's his role? Is he going to be a starter? So if you get this, let me show you this. Is this really your linebacking core? Christian Ellis. Nicobe Dean. Those are going to be your linebackers? Hassan Reddick. Can he continue his amazing success? And what I mean by that is, I mean, he's not working on... How many players do you think that are in the league right now are going on four years in a row of double-digit sacks. Boza, maybe? Um, who, who else? Well, Watts got hurt. Donald was hurt a year ago. I mean, it, it, he's on a run. And, and, and again, I got to tell you something that was more... And, and I, I give my... My guy toned so much love for this. I I get the 16 sacks. I do. Impressive. I'm more impressed with the number one and third down sacks and cause fumbles. That means you are a sledgehammer. And every time you're on the field, you have to go, where is that guy? He's the guy you do this to. Guy gives me goosebumps now. I couldn't have been more wrong about the guy. I thought, again, he struggled getting used to what they were asking him to do, but when they found, they stopped having him cover. And they just wound him up. First, they were having him cover, which he can't. He's terrible at it. 
And when they just pinned his ears and said, go eat, he did. Turned his entire season around. Maybe, maybe Miles Garrett. Sharon, maybe Miles Garrett. Maybe, okay. Man, four, if he does four years, boy, I'll tell you something. You do four years in a row of double-digit sacks. I mean, Hassan Reddick, he, he, he could be a guy that could end up with over 100 sacks in his career. You know what that means? That means you're knocking on the door of the Hall of Fame. 100 sacks? Now, what'll, what'll hurt him and hurts a lot of guys, that multiple teams. A lot of guys, you know, if you're that good, why are you on four teams? You know what I mean? So, I mean, Hall of Fame voters are weird with that shit. I'm not. I don't care. You play 12 years, I don't care if you play for the Canton Bulldogs. <laughs> go go eat, man. And if you do, you do, right? I don't, I don't really give a shit. Four years of double-digit sacks, you bet, big pick, and that's elite. Nolan Smith. I want to see how the Eagles use him. How can they get him on the field? Okay? How can they get him on the field? I'd like to see them be able to get him on the field there. I want to see what the roles are going to be. Big Sills, do you think because of their ridiculous, weak, non-existent linebacking core, they will waste and misuse Nolan Smith? I, I don't know what the side does. Okay? And I do believe that's why Matt Patricia's in there. Because, hey, Duel, what's the number one thing you remember about the New England Patriot defenses? Help me, guys, before we move on here. What's the number one thing you remember that um, how the Patriots, with all those great defensive football teams, what were they king of? You guys know? Do you guys do you guys think about the players that were stars on that team? Okay? Think about the stars that were on that team. Here. They were able to use guys like Willie McGinnis in a down situation. Stand up. Teddy Bruschi. Stand up. Hand down. Guys like that. Vrabel. Hand up or stand up, hand in the dirt. Maybe that's what they're going to do with Nolan Smith. They're going to use him like Mike Vrabel, and they're going to use him like Willie McGinnis and guys like that and put him in situations like that. You know, Jimmy Johnson or Jim Johnson used to do shit like that with Hugh Douglas. You know what I'm saying? So when you have a guy like that, it's kind of like it almost – what Dan Quinn's doing with Michael Parsons in Dallas. So I'd like to see them do that because I do believe, dude, when you run a 4 3 40 and you got to get off like that, you got to find a spot for that guy. I want to see how they get him on the field. I think at 30, he's really right where he was picked. I was not a fan top 10. The pick is a good pick. But I never believed that he's a top 10 guy. James Bradbury. I want to see if he can continue the consistency of play that he has and what he did a year ago. He was consistent from week one to the Super Bowl. He was their best DB in the Super Bowl. And he was the best DB all year long on that team. He's a good football player. Giants effed up letting that guy walk out the room for $3 million. I mean, you argued over $3 million and you got holes on that giant defense in the secondary, especially at corner, and you let that guy roll out the building. The Giants have made numerous personnel decisions and financial decisions over the last five years, and that was clearly one of them. Avante Maddox, what's his role in this whole thing? Is he healthy yet? What's his role? Is he a player? What, what, what are you doing with him? Is he, is he good enough to get on the field? 
What's the role that he has? You know, what what, what role? Okay? And maybe, maybe the reason he doesn't have a role, he's never healthy. Can't count on a guy to have a role if he's never healthy. Maddox is very effective. Got to stay out of the nurse's office. Can't rely on him. Durability and reliability are all part of it. Terrell Edmonds, will he be an upgrade to Gardner Johnson? I'll say it one more time to you guys. I think Gardner Johnson had a fluke season. Watch this. I'll make a prediction. This is just an opinion. I bet you he farts the bed up there in Detroit. You you watch. You watch. Because he's not going to be asked to play center field there. You watch. You watch. I, I don't. I think he was overrated. Reed Blankenship. Is he a player? Can he play? Okay. Out of 82 possible games, Maddox was only played in 60. Wow. Is that terrible? No wonder he doesn't have a role on the team. I'm surprised he's on the team. Too much missed time. Is Reed Blankenship a player? I had a guy tell me that he thinks he could be somebody like Bob Sanders. It's quite a, I mean, <laughs> that's quite a statement. We'll see. And then we get to Darius Slay. They call it a long shot, but I'm so high on Reed Blankenship. Okay. I, I, I want to see if he's a player. I'm not saying he's not. Okay? I'm, I'm not. I, I, I want to see if he could play. And here's Darius Slay. Is this guy going to continue his downward slide? Or was he hurt at the end of the year? Is he getting old? He slid, he slided down the field the entire back half of the season. I thought he got worse almost every month. He doesn't jump off the page athletically, but he truly understands the position and is always in the right place, whereas C.J. Gardner-Johnson almost never was in the right place. That's why they were poor fits many times against the run defense that the Eagles had a year ago. Slay has to convince me that age hasn't caught up with him yet. Oh, I think it has. But, again, that's my question. I personally think this guy, if I'm looking at, if I'm looking at Darius Slay, I don't see it. He's got to show me. Okay? He's got to show me. That age hasn't caught caught up with him either. That's I'm, I'm I'm with I'm with tone on that. I he just did not play effective football at the back half of the season, and you were lucky that you you had wrapped up things because he played shitty, and he was terrible in the he was terrible in the Super Bowl. He was awful in that game. Okay, so. By the way, I'm going to look at the top 10 defenses in the National Football League. When we come back out of the timeout, Philly Godfather is going to join me and a guy who's putting a movie project together. Okay? Guy who's putting a movie project together and I got an acting role in this thing. I can't wait. Here's the problem with Slay. Slay has been mostly great in his career. He's been a great eagle. When a guy like that becomes just good and above average, you notice it, right? When when you're at this bar and all of a sudden you can't get over that bar, that high jump bar anymore, you totally notice it, especially when the guy's been a world champ. Absolutely. It was it, it, it you saw how bad he was. 
Okay? You saw how bad he was. All right, hour two coming up here. Don't forget, this year we have a proud sponsor of the National Football Show, our friends at Hooters, King of Prussia. We are going to be there. We so look forward to it. Man, I have had a great relationship with them for over 35 years, all the way back to my days with the Bucks throughout the country. I've gone everywhere to all the Hooters in Phoenix, Dallas, Miami, Atlanta, and now in King of Prussia, the proud home of the National Football Show with Big Sills. You're going to love it. Fantasy football lovers, call them. Line your parties up right now because limited tables are left for you to get your fantasy football parties and your drafts together. They're at King of Prussia Hooters. And your preseason football, place was packed last night. Watching the Browns and Jets last night. Wait till next week because this is the official home of Eagle fans. You're going to love it. Daily specials on Tuesdays by 10 wings. Get 10 boneless wings. Wednesdays are awesome. It's a 40-year tradition they have. All you can eat for 1983. How about happy hours, man? You get six items for six bucks. You get six boneless wings, maybe your favorite brew. They got them all there for you at Hooters at 240 North Gulf Road in King of Prussia. When you go to Hooters, Hooters King of Prussia, do me a favor. Tell them Big Sill sent you.